The anatomy of the penis, uh, a popular part of the body, mostly probably because of one of its functions. I'd like to think because its anatomy is particularly interesting. It's a part of the body that can change in size, quite unlike um, any other part of the body, right? So we'll look at the anatomy of the penis, uh, you know, its general structure, blood supply and innovation, and then that'll lead us to how erection works. And then we'll talk about some of the things that go wrong, shall we? I've got a number of plastic anatomy models that will let us see the anatomy of the penis in different ways. Here's our full torso. So this is the location of the penis. Um, it has three parts. It's got a root that we can't see. It's got the body, which is most of the pendulous bit that we can see, and then it's got the glands at the end here. Now what's inside there is the urethra. The urethra is the tube that runs from the bladder to the outside. Uh, and in the male, the urethra then in the penis has two functions. One, to let urine get out of the body, to get rid of waste. But also the urethra will convey spermatozoa and semen outside the body. So the penis is gonna change in shape and size and length so that it can place spermatozoa inside the female reproductive tract at the you know, like the most effective point. There's a lot gone on here to increase the chances of fertility. So that's the penis in situ. So here are the bones of the pelvis. This is where we're gonna find the penis. We can see there's a little bit of a problem here. There's no, there's nothing here really to attach the penis to, right? And yet it's quite a big organ. Um, so here we have these, um, so this, these are the ischio, ischiopubic rami here. And between these, is a tough connected tissue sheet called the perineal membrane. And that perineal membrane then is gonna be an anchor for the external genitalia, both in the male and the female pelvis. So the perineal membrane is strung across here in a triangle shape. So in the perineal membrane or attached to the anterior surface of the perineal membrane, we'll find the root of the penis. Um, and that means that we're gonna find uh, two crura roughly along either side. These are erectile tissues, which we'll talk more about as we go. A crus is a legs. We've got two crura, one on either side, and a bulb in the midline. So those are attached to the perineal membrane. And those are in the region between the perineal membrane and the skin, which is called the superficial perineal pouch. So the root of the penis is in the superficial perineal pouch. So that's where we start. Now those erectile tissues are covered with muscle. We can see that. So if we look at this model here, can you see the bony bits there? So there's the penis. So if we look on the inferior aspect, you can see that muscle there and that muscle there. That's where the crura are on either side next to that bone there and there and this in the middle is the bulb. So this is all the root of the penis, and they're covered by skeletal muscle. So skeletal muscle is like any other muscle you choose to move. This is muscle you have control over. Um, so the muscle covering the bulb of the penis in the midline is bulbospongiosus. The muscle covering over the, uh, the crura on either side is the ischiocavernosus muscle. Now those erectile tissues are gonna continue into the body of the penis. The muscles won't, the muscles are just down here in the, in the root of the penis. But those erectile tissues will continue into the body and we can see, can you see three circles there? So three circles within a larger circle. Those are three erectile tubes um, and the urethra is here. So we have two corpora cavernosa each one is a corpus cavernosum. Um, and then down here we have um, a corpus spongiosum and the urethra is running through the corpus spongiosum. So the two crura are continuing as the, these corpora cavernosa. You can see there's a blood vessel in the middle of each of those and the bulb is continuing as the um, corpus spongiosum. Um, now the penis, dorsal and ventral, right? So. Um, the anatomical position continues the, considers the penis to be erect, right? And right now it's flaccid, which means that this is the dorsal surface of the penis 
and under there is the ventral surface of the penis. Important because we name, when we name the blood vessels and the nerves, the ones over here are going to be called dorsal, this, that, and the other, right? So that means that we have the two corpora cavernosa in the dorsal part of the penis and the corpus spongiosum in the ventral part of the penis, all right? Now, I can take this apart as well. See, that side's a bit better. So what we can see here is, well, the two corpora cavernosa, they actually meet in the midline. They're fused together a little bit. So up here, we're seeing the corpus cavernosum, but look, Here's the corpus spongiosum. There's the urethra within it running to the tip of the penis there. And this bit, the last bit of the penis, the glands, look how the glands is formed from the corpus spongiosum. So the corpora cavernosa only go this far. They don't go into the glands. The corpus spongiosum continues and makes the glands penis this last bit here. Okay. And if I put that back on the rest of the model, you can see how there's the urethra running all the way through the, the root of the penis, the body of the penis, and the glands of the penis. So that's corpus spongiosum. And here, that's corpus cavernosum. Well, the two corpora cavernosus here joined in the midline. Running that afar. Cool, huh? So what exactly are these erectile tissues? Well, they're, they're kind of like... Um, you know, balloon shaped, sausage shaped. And inside them, they're made of connective tissue with smooth muscle. And there are, in the case of the flaccid penis, lots of, lots of spaces, lots of lacunae, lots of chambers inside the erectile tissue that are collapsed, right? And we can see an artery running down the middle of each corpus uh, cavernosum. Uh, and there are lots of blood vessels supplying blood to these erectile tissues, but the blood kind of flows straight through. We'll come back to that in a moment. Um, so there are lots of spaces and lots of connective tissue inside the erectile tissues. Now, that tube of erectile tissue, um, its, its wall, its coat, if it was a balloon, like the outer edge of the balloon, is the tunica albuginea. So that's what's making the circle in cross-section. Tunica albuginea means a white coat. It's a white coat because there's lots of collagen fibers in there. It's a tough connective tissue. So that tunica albuginea, the outermost coat, the outermost parts of the erectile tissue tube, it's a tough connective tissue, which means um, it's going to determine the size and shape of the erectile tissue once it's fully inflated. And because it's connective tissue, it's not amenable to having its size or shape changed in other ways. You see what I'm getting at here? You know, it, there's no strange herbal remedy you can buy off the internet that's going to make these bigger. Um, now, the tunica albuginea surrounds each corpus but then we have Buck's fascia. It's a, this is a deep fascia, another really thick, really tough connective tissue fascia surrounding all of these corpora, all of these erectile tubes, and also running between the corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum. So that, that also decides, determines the shape and size of the penis when erect. This is a tough connective tissue. It's only going to change shape so much. You, again, you can't encourage Buck's fascia to get bigger or longer or... It's a connective... Right, anyway. Um, so we have tunica albuginea around each corpus and then we have Buck's fascia around all of that. And then around that we have a superficial uh, fascia just underneath the skin, which is also called Collis fascia. So there's a lot of connective tissue in the penis that determines the shape and the size of the penis. Um, okay. <laughs> So from the body, we move to the glans penis, which is the last section here. So the, glass, the glans penis isn't directly covered by skin like the body is. So what we find here, uh, we find the prepus or the foreskin. The, the start of the, like the, the proximal end of the glans here is the corona. And the skin here continues as a double fold. It goes out and back again. And that double fold of skin can cover um, the glans penis. And that double fold of skin is called the foreskin or called the prepus, right? And on the, the ventral surface there, um, that's tied down in the midline uh, by something called the frenulum. 
Something we can't see because we haven't got any skin on here is actually there's um, a midline raffe, a penile raffe. It's like, um, we see the same thing on the scrotum. It's like a, it's like a, a, a seam. So there's, there's skin going around the penis, but it's got a seam on its ventral surface. And that's the, uh, the raffe, that's what a raffe is. Um, a penile raffe in the skin there. There are a couple of ligaments as well associated with the penis. The, the suspensory ligament of the penis, the pubis bone is here, right? Um, so the deep fascia here continues as a sling around the penis to give it support, particularly when it's erect. And that's the suspensory ligament of the penis. And then there are some other subcutaneous tissues around here which come into the penis and form a bit of a sling around it, which form the fundiform ligament of the penis. They're from the linear alba, which is like the white line in the in rectus abdominis. Anyway, there are a couple of ligaments that support the penis, the suspensory ligament of the penis, and the fundiform ligament of the penis. All right, what about blood vessels and nerves then? Well, um, inside the pelvis, the pelvic organs are supplied with blood by the internal iliac artery and the anterior trunk of the internal iliac artery. And the internal iliac artery um, ends as the um, internal pudendal artery. That's what we can see here. We can see the internal pudendal artery, internal pudendal vein and the pudendal nerve. And we can see them running to the external genitalia. So it's the internal pudendal artery that supplies blood to the penis, making it an important artery. It, it's, import, it's really important down here generally. And if we cut the section through the penis again, we find two dorsal arteries of the penis. That's those guys up there. So they're running in the, the dorsal penis, um, deep to the skin there. And then we have two deep arteries of the penis. Those are running within each corpus cavernosum. And then there is a, an artery of the bulb of the penis, which continues into the corpus spongiosum, supplying blood to the corpus spongiosum and the urethra and running to the glands, right? Now the veins, there are also deep dorsal veins, which are essentially draining the corpora uh, cavernosa. Those are gonna drain back to the prostatic venous plexus. There's the prostate gland, the prostatic venous plexus is a plexus of veins around the prostate gland. Um, and there are also superficial dorsal veins and other veins under the skin. Uh, and the veins of the skin are gonna drain to the external pudendal vein. Now the external pedendal stuff is going to the thigh. So the external pedendal vein will drain to the great saphenous vein, which will drain to the femoral vein. And yes, there are also external pedendal arteries that are giving branches to the, the skin of the penis. All right, so that's the venous drainage. So the, the blood supply to the penis is quite important uh, because of its function, which we will get to in a moment. Let's just do the nerves. Okay, so I said here, this was the pedendal nerve. The pudendal nerve is a somatic nerve. So this is the major sensory nerve of the external genitalia. So the pudendal nerve is carrying, back here it's carrying uh, somatic sensory information. Um, and then the blood vessels in the penis, um, there are parasympathetic and sympathetic motor neurons innervating those guys. Now most of the time when the penis is flaccid, sympathetic nerves are driving a tonic contraction of the smooth muscle of the arterioles. So the blood vessels are constricted. The blood vessels that are supplying blood to those erectile tissues are constricted. So not a lot of blood flows into the erectile tissues. And in fact, we have a, a load of arteriovenous anastomoses there. That means that the arterial blood flows in and then it flows straight out through a vein. So the blood just kind of goes round, doesn't do much. Some of that arterial blood does go into capillary beds, which are supplying blood to the tissues of the penis. But much of the blood flows through those arteriovenous um, anastomoses. Um, and the, the parasympathetic innervation will do the opposite of the sympathetic innervation, ah, which leads us to the mechanisms of erection. Through either manual stimulation or psychological stimulation, um, parasympathetic neurons, their nuclei are in the spinal cord levels S2, S3 and S4 and their neurons pass into the penis um, through splanchnic nerves and past the prostatic plexus. I've talked about that in more detail elsewhere. But parasympathetic innovation then 
um, causes the arteries that are supplying blood to those erectile tissues to dilate. The smooth muscle relaxes, the arteries dilate, which means that more blood flows into those erectile tissues. There are these helical compressed arteries which now straighten out. Lots more blood flows into those erectile tissues at arterial pressure. So this is at a high pressure. And at the same time, these muscles back here, uh, ischiocavernosus and bulbospongiosus, they contract. And when they contract, they're squashing the veins that are leaving uh, the erectile tissues of the penis, which means now more blood is going in at high pressure, less blood is going out. So those erectile tissues, all those spaces in the erectile tissues fill with blood and the, the erectile tissues, they inflate like three balloons forming um, an erect penis. It's pretty neat, right? And then the opposite occurs in remission when the penis goes from being um, erect to being flaccid in that the parasympathetic innervation dips, sympathetic innervation is restored. Um, these skeletal muscles relax, which means that the amount of blood flowing into the erectile tissues is now reduced and the amount of venous blood leaving those erectile tissues is increased. Um, so the erectile tissues empty of blood, well, they're certainly not, they're not filled at pressure anymore and the penis returns to a resting state. Very, very cool. So what on earth could go wrong with that? Have you heard of phosphodiesterase inhibitors? Also known as sildenafil, or maybe you've heard of it as Viagra. Um, so that, the parasympathetic nerves, for them to do their job, part of that involves nitric oxide production, right? Um, there's a whole fun molecular pathway there by which the neurons stimulate <coughs> the smooth muscle cells to do their thing, to relax and let the blood flow into the erectile tissues. So if not enough uh, nitric oxide is being produced, uh, sildenafil can help with that. So, that's, so that can help with erection, if, if that is the cause of the difficulty in attaining erection. Um, Priapism, um, if an erection lasts for hours without stimulation, well, can you imagine how that can be bad? Um, there's, the blood flow through the penis is restricted, right? That's what causes the erection. And if the blood flow through an organ is restricted, then some of those tissues are gonna become ischemic, which is not good for cells, right? So priapism um, can be caused by a number of things. And then also you can fracture a penis, uh, but there's no bone in it. How do you fracture a penis? The tunica albuginea ruptures. So the penis is uh, erect, the erectile tissues are inflated, they're under pressure, and something, usually mechanical trauma, causes the tunica albuginea to pop. And there often is a popping or a cracking sound at some point, and that is known as a fractured penis or a broken penis, um, which is gonna, well, it's gonna need surgical repair. It, that's a significant connective tissue structure that's been uh, damaged there. Over time, blood is going to leak out, there's going to be swelling, the shape of the penis is going to change. Uh, you could damage the urethra, you could damage the nerves in the blood vessels we've talked about in there. So yeah, a fractured penis is a thing. That's a fun note to end on, isn't it? All those things that, well, those things are all fairly rare, right? But there you go, the anatomy of the penis. If you want to know more about the male reproductive system, I've already talked about many of these other bits and bobs. Join them all together, add up uh, your knowledge. All right. That's enough penis for one week. See you next week. <laughs>